If it's possible to feel good about a 15-point loss, tonight's loss in Golden State would be the game for it. The Kings put up a good fight on the second night of a back-to-back, still missing half of their roster, but they fall short of Steph Curry and the Warriors. No surprise there. But for the third straight game, Tyrese Halliburton has been the leader of this Kings team. For the third straight game, he finishes with an impressive double-double. And it's made the idea of the Kings trading De'Aaron Fox a little more understandable, or at least has added some context to it. Not saying that I would trade De'Aaron if I were the Sacramento Kings, but at least gives something for Monty McNair to consider. We'll talk about that. Uh, Plus, we'll talk about what the Kings do with De'Aaron Fox when he comes back, how he and Tyrese Halliburton can play together to continue to maximize how Halliburton is playing. Plus, we'll talk about this Kings loss to the Warriors. It's all on today's episode of the Locked on Kings podcast. You are Locked on Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team, Every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Time for another episode of Locked on King. Hello and welcome into Locked on Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season and all off season. If you're looking for in-depth analysis, game-by-game breakdowns, highlights, interviews with local and national experts, full coverage of your Sacramento Kings from January through December, this is the place for you, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. And today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Check out prizepicks.com, use promo code NBA, or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. My name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I've been a Sacramento sports media member for the last seven years. This is my eighth season covering the Kings formerly with Sacramento Sports Talk Radio, now with ABC 10 television here in the California capital. And I may have started a little bit of a a mini war, at least a skirmish on Kings Twitter, just talking about uh, early on in this, uh, this Kings Warriors game, how well Tyrese Halliburton continued to play and how that provides context that we didn't have when talking about potentially trading De'Aaron Fox. Now, my stance on trading De'Aaron Fox hasn't changed one bit. I'm not trading De'Aaron for draft picks. I'm not trading De'Aaron for a younger player. If I'm trading De'Aaron Fox, I am at minimum getting the same quality of player, which is very difficult to do. I'd rather use De'Aaron Fox in a package where you're going out and getting a player that's even better than he is who comes in and instantly becomes the team's best player to partner with Tyrese Halliburton, someone like Jalen Brown, who I've talked a lot about. Now, the issue with that is that's very difficult to pull off, especially for someone in De'Aaron's situation where he's in the first year of a max contract. He's owed owed a lot of money. Yes, a team might want to uh, acquire him as a a young guard. It's his birthday today. He just turned 24 years old. I feel kind of bad talking about trading De'Aaron on his birthday. In reality, I'm not advocating for the Kings trading De'Aaron at all. What I'm saying is, and the purpose of that tweet is, Monty McNair now has a little bit better of an idea of what this Kings team could look like without the upgrade that you would get for De'Aaron Fox, but if you were to trade De'Aaron Fox. We've talked about the partnership between Fox and Halliburton as two primary ball handlers, and it struggled early on this season, has gotten a little bit better as time goes on, but there's always been the question of can each other, can they both be maximized playing together, or does one have to sacrifice uh, for the other in certain situations? What we have seen over this three-game stretch is Tyrese Halliburton is capable of being a leader. Now, to be fair, over this three-game stretch, the Kings are one in two in games where Tyrese Halliburton has been a leader, but I don't put that on Tyrese at all. I put that on the fact that this Kings team, one, is not very good to begin with, and two, is riddled with uh, with injuries and, and health and safety protocol uh, players not playing. like this. So the record during these three games really could matter less to me. In reality, or couldn't matter less, I should say. In reality, you look at this roster... You look at individual performers, what they're able to do with these opportunities. You look what Tyrese Halliburton has consistently been able to do in all three of these games against three very different opponents, two of which are very strong defensive teams in the the Grizzlies and the Golden State Warriors. He's had the same amount of success, three consecutive double-doubles. I think he now has six double-doubles on the season. The last player to to have three consecutive double-doubles in in three straight games was De'Aaron Fox a couple of seasons ago, or maybe it was last season. Um, Regardless, like what Tyrese is doing can't be ignored. 
And it gives us a little bit of context of, okay, if the Kings were to trade De'Aaron Fox, they're more than likely trying to acquire a star big or a star wing. More than likely, it's a star wing. Names like Brandon Ingram have popped up. Names like Ben Simmons, who can also be a primary ball handler, but mainly would play the wing position for the Sacramento Kings. Guy like Jalen Brown that I've mentioned a ton. You can even talk about DeMontis Sabonis, maybe, even though he's not so much a wing as he is a 4-5 a, a kind of big man hybrid. Those are the kind of players that you include De'Aaron Fox in the discussions for. You don't include De'Aaron Fox in a sell package to Oklahoma City for four draft picks and some young player that nobody cares about who's going to be lucky to be half the player that De'Aaron is. You're, you're not making a trade like that. Even if the Kings are trying to tank, Monty McNair is not making a move like that. So with that in mind, you now have an idea of what Tyrese Halliburton can be, at least in a three-game sample size, which is not nearly enough. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is you can start to understand or start to get an idea of what Tyrese can be as the primary ball handler, someone who has to look for their shot for this team to be successful in addition to continue his, his distribution level. It's nice to see that while his offense has stepped up, while he's looking for his scoring, he's still been able to set up his teammates. And he played a lot of minutes in this game. He had to because, once again, he's the only ball handler that this Kings team has and the only playmaker, really, that this Kings team has right now. Like Tyrese has shown that, at least in the short term, he can be a pass-first point guard who can also lead the team in scoring when he has to. Partner that with a exciting, potentially star wing, and the Kings might have something there. I have said time and time again, I would include De'Aaron Fox in a trade for Jalen Brown. Do I think the Boston Celtics do that? Probably not, unless the package is Fox plus a really good player, maybe Harrison Barnes, and there's probably picks involved in that as well. And maybe that's not worth it for the Kings. I have no idea. We're all we're talking complete hypothetical here. Well, the only fact that we have at this point in time, we don't even know if it's a fact that the Kings are considering shopping De'Aaron Fox, although I think it would be ridiculous for the Kings to have Fox or Halliburton or anybody declared untouchable with how bad they're playing. If anybody's untouchable at this point in time, it is Tyrese Halliburton. And even that, it's like, eh, I mean, you should be able to be willing to trade anybody if it meant your team is getting better. Now, I'm not saying trade everybody to ultimately tank and, and get draft picks and things like that. I'm talking about including players in trade talks that will land you a player that does make you better. The Kings are not going to make a lateral move, and they're certainly not going to move backwards. They are going to look for moves that make them better. And if potentially including De'Aaron Fox in a deal to make them better uh, is, is what it takes, McNair has to consider that. And now he has the context of how Tyrese has played over these last three games. So what I'm curious, I want to throw it out to you is, from what you've seen from Tyrese over these three games, are you comfortable with the idea not with it actually happening because it's a completely different story. Are you comfortable with the idea of the Kings building around Halliburton as their primary guard and moving on from De'Aaron Fox? Are you comfortable with that idea or are you not there yet? It's completely fine if you're not there yet. In fact, I, I expect the majority of people to not be there yet because like I said, three games is not nearly enough. And again, for full uh, full transparency here, I'm not advocating for the Kings trading De'Aaron. I do want to discuss, and we are going to talk later in the podcast about what the Kings do with De'Aaron Fox when he comes back from health and safety protocols. How the Kings can try and pair Fox with Halliburton to continue to get this output offensively, both as a playmaker and a scorer from Halley, without limiting De'Aaron. We'll discuss that at the end of the podcast. But do you feel comfortable with the idea? of the Kings choosing Halliburton over Fox, essentially, and pairing Halliburton with a Fox caliber player who's maybe a wing or a big who makes a difference. How do you feel about that? Let me know. I'm at, Jack, uh, at Matt George Sack on Twitter. You can email me, MattGeorgeSports at gmail.com, uh, or uh, feel free to leave your thoughts down in the YouTube comment section down below. We have to talk about this Kings loss to the Golden State Warriors, a loss that... Honestly, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about, and I'm, I, I've told you that I'm not really going to focus on moral victories and I'm not necessarily going to spin it as a moral victory. I just, all things considered, given the context of everything and how the Kings played and feeling pretty good about it. I'll explain why in just a little bit right now, though, I have to explain to you why you need 
the app Truebill. Truebill saves you money instantly. It helps you manage your subscriptions. Do you know why free trials renew without your consent? It's a business scam to get your money out of you really without you knowing. Don't let greedy corporations pocket your money. Download Truebill to take control of your subscriptions. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. Look, there are so many subscription services nowadays. It's hard to keep track of them all. There are a couple of subscriptions that I didn't even know I, I had. Truebill was able to cancel them for me right away, including a couple that normally you have to go and, and call and talk to somebody and go through a 20 plus minute process just to get the dang thing canceled. Truebill got it done for me. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel. Truebill just makes it simple. And Truebill's concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. That's what it did for me. Overall, Truebill is over 2 million users and has helped save them over $100 million. That's crazy. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. That's Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. A loss is still a loss. The game was winnable, believe it or not, for the Kings inside the Chase Center in San Francisco. 15 points is not ideal, but like I said, I'm 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 not feeling bad about it. In fact, I'm feeling pretty good about it. And all again, not a moral victory preach. This is all about the context of this game. The Kings are missing seven extremely important players. I think it's seven. Rashawn Holmes is out. De'Aaron Fox is out. Davion Mitchell is out, amongst many others. This Kings team is ridiculously shorthanded. Plus, they're on the second night of a back-to-back. -back, and they're playing arguably the best team in basketball in the Golden State Warriors, who, with the exception of Andrew Wiggins and a couple other guys, are completely healthy. Well, and Clay Thompson, too, of course. But Steph Curry's still playing. And this was one of those Steph Curry games. You know, for some reason, it feels like the majority of the time that the Kings play the Warriors, Steph doesn't get off to the greatest of starts. Not that he's horrible, but his shooting percentage is not where you would expect him to be. He misses some good looks. He also misses some contested looks. He still manages to score 13 or however many points he had in the first half. But then he rattles off a 15-point fourth quarter like he did, and suddenly he's past 30 points and he puts the game away. That's just who Steph Curry is. I, I tweeted it out, and it's not a disrespect to Steph Curry at all. In fact, I, I consider it praise. Steph Curry makes 30 points make look damn casual. Like, he makes 30 points look freaking easy, like not even breaking a sweat. And then honestly, the story of this game was the Kings got off to a horrible start offensively for some reason um, they were able to be within 10 at the end of the first quarter, losing 26 to 16 uh, after that, that first quarter. And they could have been down a whole hell of a lot more with how poorly they were taking care of the basketball. They could not hit a shot. Somehow the Golden State Warriors just didn't take as much advantage as they had to. Then the second and third quarters, the Kings play better. Offense comes alive, especially in the third quarter. Kings at one point take a lead. The game was tied late uh, in the third quarter. And then fourth quarter comes around and the Golden State Warriors go, okay, it's winning time. We're in our own building. This is our, our game. We know how to handle this. They step on the King's throats and, and this game was suddenly a 10, then 12, then 15 point game. And here we are with the Kings losing. I mean, that's to be expected, to be honest with you. Like, could the Kings have done things better to potentially win this game? Of course. And you're not just going to diminish what they did wrong. Like I talked about taking care of the basketball. The Kings are horrific taking care of the basketball in this game. And it's not just turnovers. It's live ball turnovers, which you heard Luke Walton talk a lot about. You hear Katie and Mark and, and Kyle talk a lot about live ball turnovers on the broadcast. The Kings just were horrific taking care of the basketball. They turned the ball over 21 times. Golden State scored 25 points off of those turnovers. There's the game right there. You cut those points off turnovers in half and the Kings are tied right in it. They just could not take care of the basketball. But in the end, it was a strong performance overall from this Kings team. A gutsy performance for the Kings team. They played hard. Doug Christie has them continuing to play very, very well. Some players who were terrible in the first half came alive in the second half. Of course, Tyrese led the way with his 24 points and uh, 11 assists. But a guy like Buddy Heald, for example, Buddy was horrible in the first half. He had four turnovers, zero points in 20 minutes in the first half. Played nearly 20 minutes in the second half, scored all 18 of his points in the second half. And most of those points, I think 15 of them came in the third quarter. Buddy finishes six of 15 from the field, six of 13 from three-point range. That's nearly 50%. 13 threes is way too many for Buddy Heald. The fourth quarter buddy heel that we saw uh, last night in San Antonio, that, that buddy was nowhere to be seen until a little bit in the third quarter. 
Like that, that buddy healed inconsistency is really what plagues him. And there was a graphic that of course they put up on the Kings broadcast, which shows Steph Curry and, and buddy healed as number one and two for three points made this season. Never mind showing three points attempted. Cause that's a completely different story. And again, the difference between Steph Curry and, and Buddy Heald may only be a handful of three-pointers made, but the quality of threes and the fact that Steph Curry is on a winning team and Buddy Heald is not means that there is a massive gap between them, even if they are one and two. Like, I, l- Let's not be fooled by that. But this is also not going to supposed to be a dunk on Buddy Heald fest because even though he took too many shots, more shots than I would like, even though he was terrible in the first half, He helped in the second half and he gave the Kings a chance to win that game. He certainly helped the Kings get back into the game and take a lead in the third quarter. So at least Buddy was able to bounce back. Overall, Harrison Barnes finished with 19 points. He was dreadful to start, had a good second half as well, finished with six of 11 uh, from the field, four of seven from three point range against his former team, had six rebounds, also three assists. Uh, On the other side, Draymond Green does what Draymond does best, didn't uh, didn't do too much offensively, even though he finished with 16 points, did have 10 rebounds and 11 assists, a typical Draymond triple-double that it didn't look like he worked that hard for. Uh, Damian Lee had 18 points in the starting lineup. The Kings bench, though, was nowhere to be seen. Now, to be fair, half of the Kings bench is in the starting lineup right now because of how many players are out, and the other half of the Kings bench is is out uh, in health and safety protocols as well. So, I mean, the Kings bench is decimated right now. But that being said, only 11 points from your bench compared to, what, almost 40 or over 40 from the uh, from the Golden State Warriors bench? Yeah, you're, you're losing games like that every single time. You have to rely that heavily on your starters. And all five starters for the Kings finished in double figures, which is great. But there's just, it wasn't enough. There's never going to be enough for the Kings to actually win this game. Taking care of the basketball is extremely important for this Kings team going forward. Getting more of the Jekyll version than the Hyde version of Buddy Heald consistently is going to be important for this Kings team going forward. And then when De'Aaron Fox comes back, amongst other players, but when De'Aaron Fox comes back, finding a way to pair him with Tyrese to where this version of Tyrese that we're seeing right now, you're still able to get while Fox is on the floor with him or playing with him consistently. And how do you do that? Maybe it's a slight position and role change for De'Aaron. We'll talk about that uh, coming up in just a second. Right now, though, I want to let you know today's episode of the Locked on Kings podcast brought to you by Built Bar. I've told you so much about Built Bar with this holiday season. Grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, or even better than a candy bar. Built Bar filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with decadent flavor, covered in chocolate, amazingly low in calories, sugar, net carbs, and fat, and high in protein. You get the best of both worlds, delicious and healthy. There are so many flavors for you to choose from. My favorite is mint brownie. There's also raspberry and cherry for you uh, fruit lovers, a uh, double chocolate, cookies and cream, peanut butter brownie for those who like the hearty chocolate bars like my wife does. Uh, Built Bars give you that extra fuel that you need uh, to get through the last minute holiday shopping, even to get through Christmas morning. Hey, consider putting Built Bars in your stockings and replacing all that fatty candy. You can still get that deliciousness, still get that enjoyment of the treats on Christmas morning, but it'll be a little bit better for you, a lot more healthy for you. Consider maybe even dipping a Built Bar into a hot cup of cocoa. Hey, give it a try. Like Built Bars are basically good with everything. You can take my word for it. And when you order a Built, built, uh, built Bar box, make sure you go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Tonight's Locked on Kings podcast also brought to you by BetOnline.ag. BetOnline has you covered all season long. More prompts, more odds, more lines than ever before with football season continuing their march towards the playoffs. Basketball season now in full swing. BetOnline remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season and for all of 2022 and beyond. Head to their new updated desktop or mobile device, or rather mobile website. Sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Use promo code Locked On to receive that bonus. It's free money for you to make money on bet online making money on basketball football nhl boxing ufc even your favorite vegas casino games like blackjack or if you like slots they have it all don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports bet online where the game starts so how can the kings when De'Aaron fox comes back still get this level of production out of tyrese halliburton Not just as a floor general, not just as a facilitator, not just as a primary ball handler, but someone who is scoring 20 plus points a game, 
someone who is looking for their shot, someone who is taking their shot within the flow of the offense and partnering that with De'Aaron, who's also averaging 20 plus points per game and playing the way as a shot creator for himself that he can play. How do you do something like that? It's tough because both guys need the ball in their hands to be successful, right? But both guys don't need to have the ball in their hands every single possession for full 48 minutes. We've already talked about uh, the need for the Kings to stagger those guys. One of those two guys needs to be on the floor at all times, uh, in my opinion. But even when they're on the floor together, I think there's a way to maximize both. Now, it's going to take some workshopping, and it's going to take some getting used to. But we've talked a lot about positionless basketball. Pos- uh, positionless basketball is a, a modern NBA and basketball term where it, that's how, why you have two primary ball handlers like Fox and Halliburton in the starting lineup together. One is not necessarily a shooting guard and one is not necessarily a point guard. They both are just primary ball handlers and both are guards. That being said, you still have the point guard and shooting guard positions. And the point guard should be the one who, out of the two, has the ball in their hands a majority of the time and is facilitating on offense. That should be Tyrese Halliburton. And that doesn't mean you're demoting De'Aaron Fox by any means. But can you find a way to essentially put De'Aaron in that shooting guard position while allowing him to still be the player that he is. Giving him more looks off the ball, running him off off, off ball screens, maybe for catch and shoot three-point opportunities. He can still work in the pick and roll and get that mid-range jumper that he likes so much. He can still go downhill and attack the basket. But can you find a way when the two of them are playing together to have Tyrese be the primary ball handler, be the guy taking up the ball the majority of the time, and getting Fox the ball off of sets and off of action instead of Halliburton in the corner or Halliburton on the wing and Fox creating and vice versa. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know how it works. That's a problem for Doug Christie, Alvin Gentry, and the rest of that Kings uh, coaching staff to figure out. I don't know if it even is possible, if it even could work. But if the Kings could find a way to do that, get this version of Tyrese Halliburton consistently with the De'Aaron Fox that we know and expect. And this doesn't have to be 28 to 30 point per game De'Aaron Fox like was last season. 22 to 23 to 24, max of 25 points per game De'Aaron Fox paired with what we've seen out of Tyrese, basically averaging close to 20 points and over 10 assists a game. That's a tough ask for Tyrese, but if you can do that, there's no need to trade De'Aaron. Not at all, because you're in a good shape. You're in very good shape if you can get both players to do that. And the Kings really haven't been able to do that consistently yet so far this season. Find a way to maximize that. And we can put all these trade De'Aaron Fox or trade Tyrese Halliburton conversations, hypothetical conversations completely to rest. Again, happy birthday uh, to De'Aaron Fox, who turned 24, I believe, 24 years old today. Uh, Hope that he is, uh, I don't know if he has tested positive for COVID or if he's just in health and safety protocols. Regardless, hope he is back as well as the rest of that roster and and head coach Alvin Gentry and those assistants that are affected. Hopefully they're all back very, very soon because the Kings can use them. Their next game is against a team that they've had a lot of success. Maybe the team that they've had the most success against this season the Los Angeles Clippers, who they are 2-0 and against. That game is on Wednesday, and then after that, the Kings are off until after Christmas time. So don't you worry, though. During that time, I'm going to be having a lot of uh, a lot of guests join me. The plan is, on tomorrow's Locked on Kings podcast, I am going to be joined by uh, one of my friends from the Locked on 76ers podcast. Uh, she is new to the podcast. I've joined her a couple of times talking about the possibility uh, of a Kings and um, 76ers trade in, in, uh, involving Ben Simmons. And we, of course, are going to be discussing that. But I'm very much looking forward to my conversation with Serena Winters, host of the Locked On 76ers podcast tomorrow, or at least it's scheduled for tomorrow. Then I'm working on getting a conversation with John Corrales from the Locked On Celtics podcast to talk about the uh, possibility of of a Jalen Brown trade and whether or not that's something the the Celtics would even consider and if that's realistic to even talk about or if we should just drop that all together here on Locked on Kings. So I have both of those coming up. Plus, I'm working on uh, getting Katie Christensen back here on the Locked on Kings podcast. Of course, Katie now 
uh, the color commentator on King's television broadcast. Wanted to get her back. Uh, and all these podcasts are going to be used to fill this holiday time as my uh, my wife and I are going to be taking a much needed vacation right after Christmas. Uh, so there will not be a couple of post game podcasts. I'll share more information about that as we get closer. Uh, but regardless, one more game to go before that. So I uh, hope you'll join me for my interview with the Locked On uh, 76ers tomorrow. Hope you will join me for the uh, post game pod after the Kings hopefully beat the Clippers for a third time and hope you'll just continue to support Lockdown Kings podcast like you always do. I'm so appreciative of that. If you could leave a review for this podcast, uh, best place to do that is on Apple Podcasts or iTunes. However, if you listen on Spotify, you can now leave a five-star review on Spotify. So please do that. It helps me out a ton. Appreciate all of your support. Until next time, my name is Matt George. You have been listening to Lockdown Kings, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network.